Dr. Matthews, as always in all of your talks, you leave us with much to ponder. You leave us with much to think about. You've mentioned our key performance indicators. And that all leads to one thing, my brothers and sisters, we've got to set goals as well. Your goal might be, if you're not in hijab, it may be to adopt the hijab. If you're not in salat five times a day, it may be to start five times a day. Because one of the ways we know of the impact of Ramadan on our lives, we leave Ramadan as better people. We leave the month of Ramadan increasing our amal for the rest of the year. And also, Dr. Matthews, thank you very much for making me tear my pants. I tore my pants as I tried to touch my toes. So obviously, I'll need to do some very serious fasting, uh, not just for the first 10 days, but for the entire month and possibly beyond. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there's some clipboards coming around. If you wish to, can you please list your email addresses and possibly your mobile numbers so that you can be kept in touch by SMS and by email uh, of various Dawah events, so those who have been passed around. Just a reminder, and as Dr. Matthew said, you've all been a wonderful audience, you've been very patient, it is a lengthy evening, it's a long program, and if you do uh, tire and you wish to step outside, there, there are so many, many refreshments available. Uh, this coffee, tea, cold drinks, hot drinks, so please feel free to refresh yourselves if you feel the need. One of the things which always frustrates me personally is all this talk of heroes and this talk of uh, uh, champions. What is a champion? We're so conditioned to thinking of champions as being people who win little medals around their neck or who hold up a trophy a couple of times a year. I'd like to call Brother Kamal Saleh, who is going to talk to us about real champions, Hall of Fame competitors. Brother Kamal, where are you? Tell us about these competitors. Tell us about these Hall of Fame champions. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. In only a matter of days, the Muslims of Sydney, along with the Muslims of the entire globe, will be entering one of the biggest competitions of all time. And it indeed is a competition, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, compete with one another in goodness. So in this Ramadan, we're going to be faced with one of the biggest competitions of all time. And like with most competitions, the best piece of advice anyone can give you is to know your competitors. Know the best in the game and learn from them. Whether it be the New South Wales Blues trying to copy the Queensland Maroons, or whether it be Microsoft trying to copy Apple, it's good to know the, the best in the game and learn from them. That's why we'll be looking into the Hall of Fame. It should be about to, there. We'll be looking at the best of the best that competed in Ramadan. We're not going to look at them with the hope of competing with them because we've already failed, but at least we can learn from the best of the best of them, and inshallah we can develop to become our personal best this Ramadan. Inshallah we'll start with none other than Talha ibn Ubaidallah, um, one of the disciples of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also one of the Ashram Mubashirin, one of the ten companions who was Guaranteed paradise by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was best known for his actions in the battle of Uhud and in the battle of the camel and was known for being such a generous and, and charitable Sahaba. During Ramadan, his wife came up to him one day and she goes to Talha, you look a bit gloomy, you look a bit depressed today. So he responds to her. He goes, I'm, I'm depressed because I looked and I seen that I ha my wealth had increased and it worried me. His wealth had increased and that had worried him. So his wife responds to him, maybe you should divide it then. So distribute it. So he divided up all his wealth and he distributed it until he had none left. The custodian of his property told the companions that he had given over 400,000 dirhams in Ramadan. That's a lot of money. Next up, we're looking at Abdullah ibn Umar. Radiallahu an, he is the, the son of Umar bin Khattab, the second Khalif, radiallahu anhu. He narrated more than 2,000 ahadith and he was known for his piety and simplicity. One of his Ramadan achievements was that 
he would never, like there were, days would go past and he wouldn't have broken his fast. Uh, a beggar would walk up to him when he was about to iftar on his meal and he would reserve a bit for him and leave some for the beggar and he'll say, you take that, I'll take this. And then he'll leave. And what he took for himself, he'll go back home and give that to his family. So he'll wake up the next morning, he still hasn't broken his fast, so he has to end up fasting the next day. So, mashallah, it was, it was a hero. Another example that he used to pray in his house. He, he didn't used to pray at the masjid until everyone had left. Once everyone had left from the masjid, he'll take a flask of water with him and go to the masjid and pray all night until Fajr. Um, the next Sahaba we've got, oh no, actually we've got Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah. He was considered to be the founder of Islamic jurisprudence and was an authority in Islamic law and ahadith. One of his great Ramadan achievements was that he completed the Qur'an over 60 times in Ramadan. 60 times. So if you work that out, that's twice in one day. And I don't know, like, mashallah, that's all I can say. Um, it's, it, nothing's impossible. With, with the barakah of Allah, nothing's impossible. The ne next up we've got Tariq ibn Ziyad. Born in 50 years after Hijra in Algeria and was one of the army generals in North Africa. He played a crucial role in Ramadan in the, in the conquest of Spain and he, he overthrew the, the, the Gothic king of Spain and also played a crucial role in the, in the golden age of Andalus. So, mashallah, he, he, complete, he accomplished a lot in Ramadan. Next up, we've got Ayyub as sakhatayani He was known to be very popular in Basra and he was from Al-Hijaz in Iraq. One of his Ramadan achievements was that he would read about 30 verses from the Qur'an in each rak'ah and while people were resting in between that, the, the tarawih breaks, he would also get up and pray and, and complete another 30 ayahs in the rak'ats. And he was a very, very sincere, sincere brother. He would, whenever he was given a lecture and was about to become teary, he would turn his face away and then he would turn back around and he would say, I have the flu. So people weren't suspecting of getting teary and emotional in his, in his khutbas. He would also stay up all night and pray. And in the morning when people would see him, he would make his voice as though he just woke up so people wouldn't assume that he stayed up all night and prayed. So very sincere, mashallah. Next up, we've got Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. He was born in the year 1999 after Hijra, and he was known for his, his organization and his political skills, and he was, a, he was an amazing governor. He was a rich, rich brother as well, mashallah. He, he had, the, he had the, heaps of money, the best of clothes, the best of perfumes, the best of jewelry, ate the best of food and lived, and lived a luxurious lifestyle until of course he was appointed the Khalif. Once he was appointed the Khalif, he gave it all up. He told his wife as well, he goes, look, I don't want no palaces, I don't want nothing. We live in a clay house and, and we, give up, we give up all the wealth. And his wife chose to stay with him in that, in that livelihood as well. His, his notable Ramadan achievement was that he had a slogan called Zuhd al-Zahad That's basically divorcing the dunya Giving it all up for the sake of the akhirah Be completely detached from this worldly interest and pleasure He would also not reveal how many times he read the Qur'an But he was known to cry a lot and read the Qur'an a lot during Ramadan Next up we've got Amr ibn Yasir Amr ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu his father and mother were the slaves of Abu Jahl. And we know his mother was Sumayya, radiallahu anha. She was the first ever Mati in Islam. First ever Mati in Islam, and she was killed simply because she believed in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were also going to kill Yasser as well, but he, he had to, he, he still believed in Allah, but through his word, he had to say, he had to say, praise to an idol but Rasulullah forgave him because in his heart he was sincere and he was a true mu'min. One of his notable Ramadan achievements was in the great battle of Badr. He saw Abu Jahl running away 
and what he did to Abu Jahl was he killed him. Allahu Akbar. So next we've got Aisha bint Abu Bakr radiallahu anha, Umm al Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, the third wife of Rasulullah and the most loved of Rasulullah as well. She was the greatest scholar, one of the greatest scholars of Islam and narrated over thousands and thousands of ahadith. She was known also to fast on the hottest days of Ramadan and she made this a trend. Uh, not in, she was known to fast the hottest days throughout the year and she made this a trend so that other righteous women would copy her as well. And when people would go up to her and say, why are, you, why are you fasting on the hottest days? They would say, if the price is low, everyone will buy. So they knew the true value of the competition. One of her Ramadan achievements was that days will come in Ramadan when she'll have nothing but a dry loaf of bread to iftar on. And a, a beggar would come to her house and request something to eat. So she'll ask her slave to give away the food. And she'll be left with nothing to, to iftar on in Ramadan. So we can see, inshallah, that there's a lot to learn from these, a lot to learn from these great and noble, like the Sahaba and the scholars of Islam. And inshallah, we can implement these in, in, our Ramadan, in our Ramadan competition this year. Inshallah, we can learn from the best of the best of them and inshallah, implement that in our lives and be our very best this Ramadan and make the most out of this competition. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Akhi, for reminding us about not only the actions of the Sahaba, the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he is pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah. Also, thank you for reminding us about the actions of the generations after them, of their sacrifice in Ramadan, of their sacrifice throughout their lives. And each one of us, in some small way, should make an endeavor that we will copy some small percentage of the lives of the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ladies and gentlemen, technology is a wonderful thing. And I trust that most of you in this hall tonight would have something called an iPhone or a smartphone of some description. We've got some goodies planned for you. And to tell us about those goodies, I'd like to call Brother Hassan Kudus. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, I'd like you, me, I'd like you all to lend me your ears for the next five minutes as I'm going to make some very, very important announcements. My name is Hassan, and basically, I'll be running you through what you're going to receive in your show bag as you leave and exit today, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, how many of you go to Islamic talks, lectures, seminars, and learn all these things during the seminar? But how many of you go home and actually put these into action? Hands up. How many people actually put it into action? Okay, very few, very few. And that's why today, the team at Islamic event decided that we wanted people to, like Dr. Zachary and Matthew said, intend, plan, and do. So we've got three different tools that you guys are going to have access to to make the most of this race, which is Ramadan. The first and the most important is the iPhone app, the iPhone and Android app. Everyone here, I'd like you to pull out your iPhone. Stand up if you have to. Women, reach for your bags, pull out your iPhone and Android phone or your smartphone, pull it out right now. People on AV, can we have the video? Jazakallah khair. Introducing the Ramadan Race application, designed to enhance and enrich your Ramadan experience. With a beautifully designed nine function interface, featuring one minute energizer du'as, to make the most of every minute this Ramadan. Connecting you to trusted local charities to allow you to give sadaqah and donate in this blessed month. Watch videos of dynamic and engaging speakers as well as motivational clips to inspire you. Scroll through inspirational Islamic images and coaching tips to encourage changes in this month.
easily accessible daily prayer reminders and iftar times. The ability to access 30 daily du'as for 30 blessed days of Ramadan. Envision and inspire yourself to accomplish goals this Ramadan. Connect and share these goals with friends and family. Seek answers to all your Ramadan questions and queries with Ramadan Frequently Asked Questions. Seamless connectivity to locate your nearest Tarawih prayer location and times with full integration to Google Maps. With a multitude of fully customizable options, settings and features. Motivate, inspire and empower yourself this Ramadan with the Ramadan Race application. Your essential tool to win this Ramadan. Available for download in the App Store and Android Market. Brothers and sisters, you've seen it all. You have all the tools you need to today make a change in this Ramadan. So everyone with their iPhone app, everyone who has an Android, for Android, go to the marketplace. For Apple, go to the App Store, okay? And type in the word Ramadan race. Come on, enter it in, Ramadan race. Everyone finding it? Absolutely free, download it now. So we have, this is the, uh, the initial version, the final and most updated version which has extra added features and you'll be able to find every single resource that we provided at this event will be available inshallah in the next couple, uh, Tuesday inshallah of next week, uh, it's just going through final approval through Apple. So this will have the entire uh, presentation from today will be available to watch through your iPhone, through YouTube. You will have everything that you received today provided also. Other things that you're going to do today. So number one was download your iPhone app or your Android app. Number two, every single person today will leave with a very valuable CD. And we're not going to put this in the show bag. This will be given to you in your hand as you leave because you're going to go to your car, take out the current CD you have in your car, and you're going to put this straight in. Is that understood? So the CD is going to be given to you in your hand. You're going to put it straight into your CD player. It contains, number one, a uh, presentation by uh, Brother Muhammad Sharif called In the Shade of Ramadan, which has some great pointers on how to make the best of your Ramadan. And secondly, it has just Amma to Sheikh Al Afasi. The month of Quran, you can definitely listen to it while you're in the car. So that's your second thing. The third thing is that the team at Islamic Event and the team at RAC have developed a beautiful fridge magnet. This fridge magnet will detail all the pre-Ramadan things that you need to achieve to make the most of this month. Things like getting your intention ready, those who fail to plan, plan to fail, like Dr. Zach said, connect with the Creator, shop now. For those who get stuck during Eid, uh, during Ramadan, doing their Eid shopping, shop now. And regulate what you eat and when you sleep and cut in, finally cutting down on your commitments. So that's the second thing. The final thing that we are offering today, inshallah, is that when you get to Ramadan, you're going to need a booster event. And we have a booster event, inshallah. We have international speaker, Sheikh Suleiman Mula, coming to talk to you about keep, uh, the checkpoint, keep on moving. Okay? So today, you have all the tools. You have a CD that you're going to go home, uh, go to your car right now and put it in your CD player as soon as you leave. You're going to leave with two war charts. Find a family member, make them responsible to put this on their fridge. And finally, you're going to come to the event at Lakemba Mosque on the 25th of July to complete the process. This is your show bag. This provides you with all the tools to make this Ramadan and win. It is now in your hands. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.